All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Ask the Expert with the Martin Iden team. It's very exciting today. Uh, I'm sure you know that New York's had a big snowstorm. I'm standing here actually in uh, Duane Park in Tribeca today. Lots of snow. I hope I didn't get you too dizzy. Uh, but I'm really excited because I have a great friend and uh, it's just going to be a really fun Ask the Expert. We have Alice Perneau who is a portrait photographer, very specific about portrait photographer. And I think, you know, with, with Zoom and social media and COVID, everything is about, well, what, what picture do you have? And it's, yeah. it's funny, uh, Alice, I was having dinner with one of, my, one of our team uh, mates, Alex Magoob last night. And he's like, yeah, in, in business, you're gonna have one photo. On the dating sites, you're gonna have another photo. Uh, and a lot of people just don't know, like, <laughs> which one to put where, yeah, and stuff which like one that. to yeah. put where, and what's going on. So, so Alice, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get? How did you get involved with photography? Number one and number two. How did you like choose to to focus on on portrait uh, yeah. photography? Um. So, like every photographer, I've. He loved portrait. I mean, I've loved photography forever, uh, but I took a different uh, path career wise because I was working in marketing in the biggest medical device company, which is called Medtronic. They were, I mean, they are well known for the pacemakers and recently ventilators and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but I was not fulfilled. So I decided uh, six years ago to do something that I really, really, really enjoyed. And that's wow. where I started to look at photography. At first, I was like, well, this might not be like a, a career thing. But uh -huh. then I also discovered at the same time that I enjoy meeting people. Uh, there is a need uh, for portrait photography, either for your professional life or even your personal life. Like when you get a baby, when you have kids for a couple anniversary and stuff like that. And so everything got me started pretty much so i started in paris i'm french uh if you uh. can hear <laughs> <laughs> and so i started Surprise. yeah we did pick that up but yeah. that's great <laughs> just if people wonder like what is that accent uh. well it's french <laughs> um we never lose our accent uh, but yeah, I started five years ago and then I also expanded here in New York. So in a normal year, I actually am very between the two cities because I just like my base is in New York and I go in Paris every six, seven weeks for my clients in Paris. Okay, this okay. year it's pretty much New York, but yeah. So that's pretty much yeah how I got into photography and, and portrait photography. That's because I just love people and also... Uh, why I also quite focus on like executive and personal branding is that because in my corporate life, I've met so many very, very talented people, CEOs, VP and everything. But then you go on LinkedIn and you're like, wow, that is not like that person is like she would deserve such a stronger like image and stronger uh, portraits and things like that and i was like okay i need to help those people <laughs> i so agree i agree i mean it's every it seems like every uh you know american executive they kind of have that half smile or it's like the arms folded right like you know, know. With the portrait of them looking like they're which the body yeah. language is so wrong right you're supposed to have your arms open and welcoming not folded and so what I would tell me. you, what I would tell you, and that's always because when I meet people, for example, when we used to be able to go to events or even like a dinner with some friends, when mm -hmm. I say, oh, I'm a portrait photographer, then people get a bit nervous and they're like, oh, could right. you look at my LinkedIn picture? What do you think? And so my, my, unless it's a very bad selfie, but my answer is always like, it depends on what the message you want to convey. And so right. if you want to convey something very strong, very defensive and very, then a uh, crossed arm works. But if for right. example, someone is like that on their, on their picture, but they want to show like warmth and be approachable and be friendly, then it's not like, it doesn't match. It doesn't reflect and it doesn't tell the right story. So that's a lot of the work that I do with my clients so that we sit down and we, I just ask them like, what are the different projects? Because as you said, maybe you want some picture for your dating profile. 
And then you have like, you want to get a promotion like in the next six to 12 months. And then, oh, you work, uh, you have a project of a book and then you need also an image. And all those three images will tell a different story. You cannot have like one picture on a gray background and just put it at all like use because I mean, you can, but it's not going right. to serve you well. That's, that's, that's what I do. That makes sense. And, and so just kind of going back a little bit. So, so what, what gets you most excited about portraits of the people being able to express themselves or their, their personality so, through their headshots or, or, or what, what attracts you to that? So what I, so, I mean, you know me, like I'm a people person. So I love to get to meet people, listen to people, discover their story and everything. So that's the first, the first big driver, like for each of my clients, I'm so excited to just meet them and just like hear about their story and things like that. And often like they are very, I mean, there is lots of inspiration. We all have our different lives and struggles and expertise and stuff mm -hmm. and energy. And I love to like uh, discover that. Um, and then another, um, yeah, that's that's like, I would say my main driver would be like, yeah, meet, okay. meet people, yeah. So you're a people person, you like to meet them. So so I guess- And also, like, well, okay, another thing, sorry, another thing no, is please. that I work I work mainly with people who are, I don't shoot model, like never. I mm -hmm. don't like actually. I only photograph people. Sorry, Sean, face. you can't be photographed. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I, because it's an exercise, it's a hard exercise to go in front of the camera. No one likes it. Like it's a bit like going right. to the dentist. And most of the people are, uh, I photograph don't feel really comfortable and, and, and it's an exercise. Like they're really like, oh, I really need those images done, but I just don't want to do it. And so what I love to do and what drives me is to like create like an environment where okay. we just have fun. We're not going to die. That's just going to be fun. And it's just, we are a team and we are just here to create like the images that will just reflect what they want to say. And so that's just to create that small bubble of like, it's all good. That's going to be fun. So that's what I love. That makes sense. And so, you know, and I think a lot of, uh, you know, for Americans, the experience of, of photographs is, is either when they were a little kid. Uh, I myself went back when Sears was around, right? You would go to Sears and it was a guy behind the camera, like squeaking a duck, trying to make you laugh and giggle, you know, and even at the age of four or five, you're like, this guy is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm even more ridiculous, you know, catering to this. Or it's the high school photograph where, you know, let's yeah. do three shots and that's it. And, and none of those, I think, and everybody hated how they looked, you know, with their school photographs because you're it's an awkward age, your body's changing. And I think yeah. there's some of that burned image of, of why. So, so what do you do? Uh, we talked a little bit before the show that we have a, kind of the same taste of music uh, a little bit. So, so, so what do you like, what is your suggestion, I guess, for people to prepare for photography today? Okay. Like, uh, like a mindset is so number one. So several oh, things. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What I would advise for anyone who's booked a shoot or is about to book a shoot and they really like, they're a bit nervous about that whole thing is, um, yeah, ask the photographer if they can put music on. So music is always nice and it's just like make the whole environment like easier and not on uh, non accord and things like that. So that's one thing. Clothes. Only bring clothes you're comfortable in. Do ah. not bring, you know, sometimes I don't know about you, but me, I always keep some piece that I never wear, but I never know one day I might wear them. And sometime I would have clients bringing those, but this, there is a reason why we don't put Sometimes some piece is because we don't feel comfortable in. Do not right. bring those. Bring, you know, those outfits where you feel powerful. You know, that kind of outfit where you put it on and you're like, okay, I got this. That is the outfit that you want to put because you're going to be already in a um, sensitive situation. So if you have an outfit that you feel very strong in, just prioritize that outfit. So that would be, uh, that would be another thing. A third thing. So me, I, 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 I ask my client to do it, but if the photographer don't ask it uh, to you, just do it, breathe, breathe, ah. breathe, breathe, breathe. Cause you know, you're like, ah, and you start 
and you don't breathe. <laughs> breathe. And I really had them like, okay, breathe in, breathe out, and then, and, and I always get right. great shots when they, I have them breathe. Because you know when you're nervous, either you yep. give a presentation or like you forget to breathe, as simple as that. And just that, like comfortable, uh, close breathing and music, you have already three things that will make the whole thing a bit easier. That's that's all great, uh, great piece mm -hmm. of advice of breathing. But I just wanted to touch a little bit on clothing. So, you know, I did the same thing. So, you know, every or uh, relatedly, like every season, I'll get a new suit or a new pair of shoes or something. And I will wear that suit before the event. Right. So if it's a new suit and I'm going to be doing a presentation for, uh, you know, a multi-million dollar listing, I'm not going to wear it that first day no. there because yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not comfortable. I, I have to break the clothes in. So I think it's really smart mm. to do that. And, and then, you know, kind of a little bit on, on clothing. Can you touch base? Like, I think, yeah. you know, like everybody's sort of confused. So, what do I wear? Do I wear yeah. a black turtleneck because I'm in a high tech company? Do I wear a suit? <laughs> Cause I'm a banker, uh, <laughs> you know, Again, it will depend on your your target, why you're using that picture. Like, for example, let's say I'm going to use an example, someone who is working in a startup in tech and for some reason decide that he wants to move into the luxury industry, uh, like a, a kind of like type of company, very traditional. Then you might want to fit more into a dress code of like a bit more traditional, uh, something like a bit less techy, a bit less casual, mm -hmm. but and vice versa, like really mm -hmm. ask yourself, like, um, who will be the target for each project? Let's say you write a book. Uh, it's going to depend on the book. Uh, but like, if, right. if that's a self development, you might want to go like friendly and like bring some colors and stuff like that. If you write like, I don't know, a thriller or then it's, it can be a tiny bit more dark, like always right. think of like the end and, and how, what you want to, what's the message that you want to convey. So that's, that's the thing. Um, and also like in terms of colors, like the, oh yeah. Let's talk about colors. Like what? Yeah. So Go colors, ahead. they have some kind of energy and it's used in, in, in communication, in politics, in like logos. They all have colors for a certain right. reason, like Starbucks is in green and, and all that kind of thing. And it means something. And so like I would maybe speak about three colors that are very interesting. Lots of people, they wear lots of black. You don't have to wear the colors all over. You can have like an accessory that can be a scarf, that can be a tie if you wear a tie, that can be like, you know, the small like uh, thing that you put in your pocket, in your pocket, square. that can be the color. Yep. Yeah, okay. exactly. Perfect. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so in terms of like colors, like three colors, interesting. The blue is like expertise, loyalty, like look behind you, there is the blue sky. If you want to remember, yeah. the blue is always there. The, the sky and the blue is always there. So the blue is really a color that is like, it's always there, trustworthy, okay. expert. That's that kind of thing. Green is, think of like the trees. Green is growth. So that's interesting. Ah, growth. yes. Yeah. Growth and money. <laughs> right, absolutely. I think Sean and has then, a green suit. Yeah, but anyhow, no, yeah exactly. <laughs> And then another color that can be interesting is, is the red and the red that's the power the character i mean think about the red rose it's about passion and so it's like it's a strong color so you don't have to wear it all over and have like a full like red suit and stuff like that but just when you choose your outfit and that can be for your next portrait session but that can be also for your next meeting think okay. about like the color that you want to wear for your ne next time you're gonna go and and visit a listing with a potential client, like, yeah, maybe mm -hmm. think about the colors, but yeah, any type of meeting and even on a Zoom, like think about what you're gonna wear and the colors, because they do impact. Interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then along those lines, now, should you bring uh, more than one outfit because you're not sure of, of how you're gonna perform in it or the photographer may capture you yeah. in different ways? Or what's your thoughts on that? So. 
my thought so i know that the, the photographers do different things you see many photographers they're like oh it's one outfit and they say it usually on their website me i have a hard time to do that because it's more about like uh, creating the, the images than being like, oh, that's just two outfits, no more. And in real life, what happens is that sometimes we put an outfit and we see oh, that top doesn't really work the way we want it. Let's switch to this other one. So I'm mm -hmm. always about like bring as much options as possible. And we just okay. like, cause like that's, it's flexible. And we make sure that we do finish the session with what's really needed. Uh, so I would always advise to bring uh, different outfits. Be careful if there, I have another advice for people, be careful with white shirts. Like the white has, has a tendency to swallow the light and that will make you look heavier. That's just it. That's just like Interesting. that. Interesting. So always bring something like that's going to cut like a, a dark jacket or something that's going to create a line or something on the, the white shirt because white is a tricky one because it has a tendency to make you look heavier. That's very just, interesting. Yeah, that's how it's it is. just the way it is. Now, uh, <laughs> just kind of moving on a little bit. Now, the, you and I talked in our in our like pre uh, warm up the, the the discussion of black and white versus color portraits. Um, yeah. Right. Same. Want to share some so thoughts I, on that? Yeah. So I get that question a lot. Um, and again, it's going to depend on how you're going to use that image and what industry. So because the colors, they bring some energy. And I told you about those colors. If you take those colors away, then, uh, I mean, you take completely away that kind of like, uh, because the mind and the, the brain actually reads colors. So if you take that away, then fair enough. Uh, usually black and white works great in like all the artistic um, industry fashion also look at fashion look at fashion brands these days if you go mm -hmm. on all the websites of like Chanel, Gucci, uh, Tom Ford everything is black and white so it works great in fashion great in an artistic uh, area um, and more traditional because look I mean black and white mm -hmm. pictures were, were also something of the past so in our brain, we read that as something quite traditional. Works great if that's, if that's the message that you want to convey. But if you want to work in like, uh, if you want to use those images for something like that is more lively, that is warm and things like that, go colors, 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 colors. Don't, I mean, yeah. Got it. Okay. So that's really helpful. So, you know, yeah. if you want to be warm and friendly, black and white photos may not be exactly. the right way to go. One little thing though on black and white and colors. So sometimes like black and white are very forgiving pictures. Uh, and if you book a photographer that doesn't offer editing, uh, he will, I mean, you have, a, they have a tendency to then propose more, push more for the black and white because it's very forgiving. Like, like, you know, we don't have a perfect skin and things like that. Right. However, if you work with a photographer that offer editing, uh, then colors is great because they can like, you know, we are all tired and, and, and that kind of thing. And yeah, yeah. And so and anxious, that's the thing with right. color. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really, a little detail. Yeah. That's great. So can you give a couple of suggestions? And at the end of this, Alice, we're going to, we're going to have your contact information and on, on words and stuff. So, so how would you, can you tell me a little bit about like, you know, how much is a portrait photographer cost in general? And how would I pick one? Does it cost like $10,000? Is it a hundred bucks? Like, like what? Where so is literally, this? yeah, the spread is literally that. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, so maybe the question, like I answer it more in like how to choose your photographer. Yeah. Okay. So if you want one quick headshot, something super fast, uh, and you are not really caring about like how you really look and you don't, yeah, you want something, a quick fix. You can find something from hundred bucks, uh, to like, yeah, 300 and things like that. But that's going to be like, you might not have the choice of having different outfits. You will not have, like, they will not do like, uh, they will just do headshots. They will not be editing. You might not even be able to choose your favorite pictures and things like that. So that's the thing. 
Then me, I'm more around like the 800, 1000. It starts around there where, for okay. example, I completely tailor the session. So right. one shoot is never the same than another shoot. And, uh, and that's the thing, like the more you will put budget in, the more you will be able to really build something which is really about you, your brand and what you want to say. So that's the thing, if you want the same headshot than everybody, then you can go cheap. But if right. you want something that is a very, that can be more powerful in terms of like branding, then it's going to be at least 1000 and up there. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I mean, it's the old adage of you get what you pay for. Um, any thoughts yeah. about, about a studio versus uh, outdoor space for photographs? Very good question. Very good question. Again, it depends uh -huh. on what you want to say. So one thing to consider when you're in front of the backdrop, it brings a sense of intimacy, like a one-to-one -one relationship, like because it's all very much about you. So like, for example, it works great for people working in, in HR, um, a life coach, it works great for that kind of like uh, thing. For your type of business, for example, I mean, you need to, I would advise strongly to be outside or in a nice interior because what that's your expertise and that's what you do. And so it makes more sense. Um, right. But again, like it's gonna depend on what you want to say. And very often in, as I tailor around like the, the each client, very often it depends on the case again uh, but we can do like indoor and outdoor in one session because sometimes it makes sense to do both that's really yeah. that's really great now what yeah. uh what can you can you share some tips let's say that uh you know somebody doesn't even want to want to i don't know want to try to do some of their own shots for argument's sake do you, and what, then i have what, a question also martin Sorry. Okay. Well, why don't you go into your question now, Sean? Go ahead. So, uh, are do, what about skin tones? Are different photographers better with different skin tones, or is it just a matter of lighting? Like my skin tone versus Martin's skin tone. Is that with the same yeah. photographer? Yeah. Is it a different photographer? What talk about that? So, I that's a very good question um, because, for example, in I mean photographers have to train themselves that's like makeup artists they have to train themselves in terms of light because that's a question of light and that's a question of something called a white balance and you will clearly see when you choose a photographer on their portfolio on their website if there is no like dark skin colors and tones you might not want to go there but that's that's true for dark skin tone but also asian because that's okay. the same yeah right and it's the same than uh, makeup artists like they need so i know that myself i trained myself to be able to welcome everyone and every skin tone and i know that i do have clients that often come to me because of that and because they see on the website that i do great with every type of skin tone and and it worked great so if you search for a photographer and you're worried about skin tone, look at their portfolio. And if you see okay. just one type of skin tone, then you know. Okay. Okay. Excellent. That's really yeah. good. Thank you, Sean. Um, so yeah, going back, let's say, you know, you know, my, my uh, yeah. son will maybe, will, will catch this at the end and wants to do, you know, some shots for himself and he's a teenager yeah. and, or, or just Sean and I goofing around. Like what are some good yeah. tips for, for doing portrait shots? So um, let's say you do that with a phone. Try yeah, with an iPhone. Hold, okay. Yeah, try not to hold the phone because your arm is not long enough and the lens are very short, so that's gonna distort. So try to like kind of find a way to put it a bit further, and try to put it either at eye level or higher. Never lower. Like either eye level or a tiny bit higher, but never lower. But that's one Got thing. It. Second thing, put the window in front of you. Uh, always the light in front of you. That's an easy one and uh, like makes everybody and the world looks great. So light <laughs> and window in front of you. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and what else can I say? That's pretty much, yeah, that would be. And in terms of 
background try to have something not too busy and and like kind of like a wall or something that can that can work um, pretty pretty easy yeah okay well that makes sense so number one have the camera at eye level or above not below yeah you get the double or triple chance. don't go crazy don't go crazy and be above huh don't go like that okay either, but like yeah, okay. eye level, remember because <laughs> you eye have level. some people that goes like that yeah yeah no no mm -hmm. so try to stay eye level try to put it a bit further away and not at arm length and try to have windows in front of you and something plain behind you like a wall or something that sounds wow. great um so one do you have anything else you want to add it's always goes so fast we're already like we only have a few more minutes left uh no i've said pretty much i'm trying to say so i have a question yeah. man also okay sure. go ahead so um is a portrait considered like chest up or can a portrait be your full body what's oh, a, that's what's a, considered that's a, portrait? a very interesting question because uh, so I'm French, and in French, uh, there is no, the word headshot doesn't exist. That, that's portrait. For everything, when there is your face, that's a portrait. And when I got here, everybody's like, oh, you do headshots. And I was like, what are headshots? And I understood, <laughs> like, okay, headshots is really like the face and your shoulders, and that's it. And that's the traditional thing to have on your LinkedIn or... So headshots are great, but you miss the chance to use your body language of the upper body. And so I would advise, so sometime on like, for example, you speak at a conference and they have just a tiny little space for your picture, you might want to stick to headshots. But if you have a bit more space or for LinkedIn, it works great also to have like the upper body because you can use the body language uh, and it's all to your advantage because we can say, oh another thing that i didn't speak about like should you put the hands in the frame that's a good one ah yes yeah so you should put the hands in the frame because first like um because i've read and studied a lot about like our unconscious and so the brain um and someone will give you more trust when they see your hands so that's one oh. thing the level of trust when they see your hands and also, seriously, if I have a client that tells me, like, for example, they get promoted and they're like, I feel like uh, that I want to show that I'm able to handle like some big project that I can take things in my hand. Well, there you go. So it doesn't have to be like very obvious, but if you see just a tiny bit of hands in the frame, then it's just going to show like, oh, he can take things in his hand and handle big projects and stuff like that. So I'm like the body language on the upper body. It's, I mean, you can say so many things. So that's why headshots are great, but you're missing uh, on the opportunity to say what you want to say. That's a really good, that's a really good thing. And then just kind of quickly touching about the, the future. Do you ever see this happening remote where I would have a great camera on my computer or, or does it still have to be face to face? in the studio so that's that's a good question like because when covid started last march so <laughs> pretty much like everybody yeah. was panicking because like it's very like yeah face to face so you could see those starting like so zoom zoom shoot and things like that the thing is okay. that the, the the quality of the images the lens uh it's still not there yet I mean, look okay. at me right now. I mean, I'm completely like overexposed and things like that. So mm -hmm. technically, I mean, the, 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 the images quality is not there yet. And also like it works great with models because whatever angles, they look great. But for people like uh, me, for example, like angles is everything. And so a photographer, that's also the, what he has to bring in terms of expertise is like use the angles to make someone look great. And the lens on your computer, on your phone are not really like the nicest. And so that's right. where like, as long as um, the tool doesn't make the photographer, we're not there yet where the, the digital will take over. Uh, however, just a side note, like uh, mm -hmm. I'm able to, I've been able to welcome clients uh, the recent months and things like that in a completely safe way because even if it's face to face, it's still right. like we can keep two uh, six feet. So, okay. yeah, easy. You can still uh, do like it. A, yeah, exactly. 
And that's the thing, like I keep my mask the whole time. Uh, the person, we can easily stay two, meet, uh, two meters, uh, six feet away. Uh, and so it works completely safely and, uh, and it's, it's gone great. So that's why I'm not really worried. Like for, for 2020, we can make things work, um, no problem. Oh, that sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Alice. Alice Purnell. Well, Archie I just want to also Go say, ahead. Alice, that you, I think the energy of a photographer is extremely important. And you have amazing energy, which totally puts people at ease, I'm sure. And I look forward to reaching out to you for my own portrait. Sure. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> that sounds thank great. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you well, for thank everything. you, Alice. And everybody, thanks again for joining in with an episode of Ask the Expert with the Martin Iden team. And uh, next week, we have Alex Magoo as the guest host. All right. Thanks again. Hold